sea cucumber is the oldest commercial fishery in Australia. From around 1500, Makassans from Sulawesi in Indonesia sailed to Arnhem Land to harvest trepang, which they then shipped to China. In Torres Strait, it's believed beche de mer was the first product to be traded with outsiders, beginning in the 19th century. That trade continued until World War II. Tim Skews, marine biologist with CSIRO, takes up the story. And then there was an abeyance in fishing, so fishing stopped. Um, probably because the market into China stopped around that time after the Second World War and Communist China. Probably made it difficult to trade. For whatever reason, there was very little bestimer fishing going on until about the late 1980s when it started to take off. And, and, and it was pretty much about the time that China started to open up, became a bit more affluent. So the market demand was there again. In Torres Strait, it started on the Papua New Guinea side first in about 1990, 91, and on the Australian side in about 1992, 93. And there was a big pulse in effort that happened at that time, mostly focused on the sandfish fishery on Warrior Reef. And that fishery was basically fished out over a three or four year period in the early to mid 1990s. So one thing that that early pulse in effort in Torres Strait and the overexploitation of the sandfish fishery and the black teatfish fishery taught us is how susceptible sea cucumber fisheries are to overexploitation. And in fact, this is a lesson that's been learnt globally. Um, sea cucumber fisheries right throughout the South Pacific are either overexploited and being fished at below their maximum yield or they're closed and are recovering. This susceptibility to overfishing makes it crucial that fishers observe management arrangements. In Torres Strait, those arrangements were devised jointly by AFMA, that's the Australian Fisheries Management Authority, scientists and the community themselves. They comprise two basic measures, total allowable catch, or TAC, and size limits. Total allowable catch is a catch limit, set in tonnes for certain species. Once that limit has been reached, the fishery is closed. Equally important is size limits. So the reason that size limits are so important, if you fish undersize animals, then they won't be allowed to grow to a size where they can breed, and therefore you won't get the babies being reproduced that'll settle back on that reef. There's still a lot we don't know about sea cucumber biology and ecology, particularly the stock recruitment relationship. How many do you have to leave to make sure you get enough spawners the next season? And also, for a single reef, how important is it to leave animals on a reef so that you get recruitment back to that reef? Once again, that's where the minimum size limit becomes very important for protecting individual reefs from overexploitation. The size of a sea cucumber isn't always easy to judge. They can stretch. Generally speaking, a safe rule is, if you're not sure, leave it. Put another way, if it looks undersized, it is. Finally, managing a sustainable fishery requires accurately reporting your catch. That way there's a record and information of what's been taken and what is sustainable to fish next season.